Um, great. Uh, lovely to be here. Thank you, Genetic Otago. Um, it's uh, been two or three years, I think, we've been working together on um, these programs. I know you've been here for a long time, and I've got the last slot. And I kind of feel like I should just throw this out, what I've prepared, because every single speaker tonight, I just want to get up and say, oh, you know, that's great that you've said that. Yeah, you know, totally agree, etc. So um, the messages, the career stories, the ups and downs, the failures, the successes, I mean, it's just really great to hear. Uh, can I hear, uh, just to ask a question, at the beginning of the year, I think it might have been in the lab next door, I did a session with genetics. I see if you're nodding, can you put your hand up if you were at that? Just so. Great, so who's made friends with their lecturers this year? Keep your hand up. <laughs> cool, because that was one of the things that we talked about um, back then, so I'm really glad to see some of your hands up around that, and, and you mentioned exactly that. Um, so, what I'm going to do really, really quickly is just a bit of an overview, um, and obviously you can come and talk to us about um, anything. Uh, there we are. Okay, so when you're thinking about what you're going to do, what comes next, I know you're at, um, at different stages. One of the things that you'll be thinking about is what, what are you interested in? And taking that to the next step, um, as Tom talked about, you know, what's your why? What's your why? If you don't know what that means, look at Simon Sinek online. What's your why? It's amazing. Um, and you will make much better decisions about your future and be much more inspired and excited about what, what you're doing if you know what your why is. What's the change that you actually want to make in the world? And then one day, instead of sitting here in a lecture theatre, um, you'll be doing what... I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name, but the math... The man with the expensive grey hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Um, okay, um, so you know, if you know, if you've got, can kind of figure out, just start on that journey. You don't have to know the end of it, but start on the journey. What's your why? What are you really interested in? If you look at this and look around this room, some of you will love the pure science and the research. Some of you will love the communicating, and we've heard that from a couple of people tonight. Some of you, it will be about working with people, really that hands-on um, helping kind of stuff. For some, it will be more about the commerce and, and taking things into industry. Um, great story about a combination of, of your CEO um, with um, the PhD, the, the combination with the science background, um, or maybe it is the stats and the data, etc. So important to know that about yourself. I told you mice run backwards on a Mac, Mac mice. Okay, another thing you need to think about is your skills. And a few people have talked about this tonight. Tom also talked about it. We talked at the beginning of the year. This was some of the latest information we had at that point, um, pre a certain event early in the year. Um, and it's an interesting look at uh, the different... I think what's interesting about that from the World Economic Forum, I hope you can see it properly, is the difference in skills and actually what's being really valued, because you will have your qualification, you will have your technical skills, but what employers are looking for are what we call the human skills. So it used to be called the hard skills, soft skills, and now we say the, the soft skills are the hard skills. I like to call them the human skills because it's the stuff that technology can't really replicate. Um, I don't like these mice. Okay, this came out during lockdown from Forbes in America, um, and it was interesting. You know, if you pick, take away the, the tech um, skills, which some of you may have or may not, but look at those human skills, adaptability and flexibility, um, creativity and innovation, critical thinking. Um, isn't that science? How much of that is science, you know? Um, emotional intelligence, and you'll see that sitting over there on the World Economic Forum skills as being really, really important as well. Um, so this is, these are the skills you develop while you're at university. You will develop them within your studies, but you will also develop them in everything else that you do in life. Okay. Someone talked about this. I think the networking, you were talking about nepotism. That's another word for it. Um, and we do, you know, the, the figures vary a little bit, but around the world, the research constantly says, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of jobs come about because of who you know. 
And these are opportunities that you make yourself and you start building your networks and making those opportunities happen now, before now. Okay, don't wait till you leave here to start thinking about your networks. If, um, I really love this diagram. If you've seen me present before, you will see it because it's in probably most of the presentations that I do. Um, but it just clarifies that thinking. If I want to employ somebody, if I can put someone in that I know something about, I know them, I know how they operate, I know the quality of their work, I know that they will fit my team. Um, so, you know, Blair talked about the importance of his team. Um, um, who had the, I've forgotten, who spoke earlier on. Um, I think you were talking about your internship at the beginning leading into a full-time job because they knew the quality. Uh, they knew what they were getting with you, really, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so you move up the triangle. And, you know, if, we, if we're in the Career Development Centre, if we were looking for somebody and we didn't have someone at the bottom, we would be talking to our team and saying, well, who do we know in our professional career development um, networks, who do we know that might fit our team and we know the quality of their work? But, and so on. But for a lot of us, we, you know, we look at the jobs that are being advertised and we start up there and that's hard. That's really hard because you're not the only one with your qualification and you're not the only one starting there. So I really, really encourage you to um, think about how you can get closer to the employer. And yes, you're lucky enough to have someone stand up and sit here and say, hey, does anyone want a job? Yeah, you know, that just doesn't happen as often as we would like it to. Okay, so this is it. This is the equivalent of Tom's circles. Okay, this is my version. Okay, you've got a pointy circle. When you are applying, every one of you is the stuck. Every one of you is a pointy circle, but when you're applying for jobs, it's about how you sell your story and it's about what's different about you and getting across, getting that across to people. It's not a boring CV, as you said, it's not a list. Many of you will get CV templates that have got a skill section and some bullet points and you'll bring them to me to look at and you've got bullet point um, time management, bullet point communication skills, bullet point working under pressure, etc. What does that tell me? As an employer, it tells me you know how to write a list of bullet points. That's all it tells me. Okay? So you need to be starting to think, actually, what is your experience? What is your point, um, uh, point of difference, we call them, all the time? You know, what is it? So, and how are you actually going to get that across um, in every way you sell yourself? So obviously it starts off with your CV because you don't very often get the interviews without that process um, and so on. So with your CV, and I'm not going to do a whole CV thing now because, you know, you can come and see us about that. But if you look, you need to be starting to think about the job, the employer, what is their need, what is the job description. You need to pick those job descriptions through fully. What are the key things they are looking for? And then how can I tell the employer that I have those key things? I'm not going to tell them everything that I've got and let them figure out whether I'm, I'm any good for their position. I actually need to put it on a plate that I have exactly what they're looking for. So your application process should start with what does the employer want and then how can I best present my points of difference and what I've got in the context of actually what am I applying for. Okay, think about your skills when you come to selling yourself. You'll have those hard skills we talked about, the technical skills, your um, your experiences, your, you know, what you've learned in your degree in science, you have a lot of technical skills, obviously. But all of these other things, everything else that you can do in your life. I had a student who, in her second year, is a commerce student, by no means an A-commerce student, um, but she got an internship and she also got offered a graduate role, she's only at the end of her second year, um, as long as the internship went fine, based on her life experience. Because they just loved what else she had and they really wanted that. So please just don't, make the most of your opportunities, but don't undervalue what you have. Uh, um, so when you get to the interview, and again, I'm not gonna go into that in depth because you can do that with us. Um, 
But the days of thinking, oh, I've got an interview, okay, I better dress nicely, um, I'll make sure that I've got a good smile, a good handshake in the pre-COVID days, now we have a good whatever we have. Um, and I will, yeah, make that really good eye contact. And I just hope that the questions go my way and it goes all right. And, oh, I hate when they ask me that tell me about yourself question. I mean, my gosh, who's been to an interview that hasn't asked that question? You know, a formal question. They're so common. So preparation, there is so much you can do to prepare for an interview and, and make it much more successful. Come and see us. Okay, and before the interview, for goodness sake, research the company. Blair said that, you know, he expects people to have looked him up on LinkedIn. Know what the company is about. Know the people that are sitting in the, in the room with you. If you've got a panel, I am rubbish at remembering names. I know I am rubbish at remembering names. But before my interview, my last one, which is the Career Development Centre, I knew who was going to be on the panel, so... I went online and I stalked them and I knew who they all were and I knew when I walked into that room, one thing I didn't have to worry about was remembering their names um, and, and, and what might kind of drive them and how I might be able to use that. So, so much preparation you can do for interviews. I actually really love interview coaching, which sounds a bit geeky, but because I know how much difference it can make for you, so please come and use our resources. Um, and then LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to try not to do a hard sell, but I do, a, I do all the LinkedIn stuff at the Career Development Centre, and I do a weekly um, LinkedIn webinar, which is part one, getting started. Who's got a LinkedIn profile? Yay. Who uses their LinkedIn profile actively? Oh, that's pretty jolly good, actually. Um, I, we've also started this year a part two, which is a little bit in response to what's happening with COVID, and I guess in a way, but it's um, in more depth, looking particularly at networking through LinkedIn and, and the job search um, capacities of LinkedIn. So if you want to do that, um, hop online and book into one of those. I, I do get a little bit excited when I'm talking about LinkedIn, so be warned. Okay, but it's not just about finding jobs. You know, you want a network. How do you look after a network? If you've got your friends, you look after them, don't you? Okay, if you connect with someone, say you connect with someone here tonight, and then they never hear from you for a year, and then in a year's time you go, oh, you might have a job for me. Well, they won't even remember who you are. You know, that's not a relationship of any sort. So think not just about how you organise um, your network, but also looking after it a little bit, and, and that's something that I talk about. It's your opportunity to build your brand, brand sell yourself. It's your CV working for you 24-7, but it's your CV plus. You know, it's not just what's on your CV, it's adding more depth and more layers to it. Um, and it's, it's actually a lot of fun, I find. Um, one of the things I love about LinkedIn is through my connections and networks, um, is my home page, because I absolutely adore my job here, and so I'm not in a job search space. But my home page, because of my connections and the companies I follow, um, and just the people, some of the people I follow aren't related to me work-wise in any way, um, but they're just people that really inspire me. I really love the way they think and look at the world. And so my home page is flavoured by all of those things. And every day, you know, I'd be waiting for my coffee or waiting for a bus, and I can just have a quick look. Um, I've got connections in the career development field all around the world, and so every day I'm seeing what's happening in the career space around the world, which has been particularly, um, tell you, this year's been an interesting time to be um, a career advisor, a career practitioner, um, because whew, the things we always talk about have changed a bit. So, um, you know, it's hugely, um, hugely important, and then it has this big database. So. If you've seen me talk about LinkedIn before, I've probably showed you for real. If you go and look at the alumni, there are currently, oh my gosh, I think around 70,000 University of Otago alumni on LinkedIn. And in effect, it's a database. And so you can go and put your um, search terms in, and this was just a screenshot of genetics, and you get all sorts of information. You get where people live, where they work, what they do, um, the skills that they've developed in that time, you can find out that they're connected to you. So I think 
I manage my LinkedIn network quite carefully, so it's not huge. I might have about 150. Um, but every time I put a search term in, in a workshop, you know, just depending on someone who's in the workshop, um, it amazes me to go and look at my connections. And nine times out of ten, I'll have a direct connection or a whole heap of, of um, just one connection removed with someone with the strangest fields that I didn't think I knew anybody with. Um, so if you, just for example, you're in genetics and you want a genetics role and you'd like to work in the Ministry of Health in New Zealand, you can go and actually see, are there any genetics alumni working for the Ministry of Health? What are their roles? What's their experience? Are you connected with them? Do you know someone who knows them that might be able to set you up um, to actually have a chat with this person? So this is, this is just a really, really good resource for you. And, um, yeah, if you want to do one of the LinkedIn webinars, we'll look at that a little bit more. Okay, so just very basically what next for many, many of you. It's about investigating, exploring, know your field. Know your field. Keep learning about your field. This is where you, know, where you want to work. Um, where do you find out the information? Talking to people is completely priceless. Your networks. Um, online, obviously, belonging to professional organisations if it's um, relevant. Your department. So, you know, our specialisation is careers. That's what we do. But these guys do genetics, you know. Or um, micro or biochem or whatever. Um, so, again, build those relationships with your lecturers. That's what they're there for. Uh, and then think about your professional uh, presence. You're building now for your, for your time out of the workforce. So LinkedIn, your network, professional organisations, if it's relevant. Um, come and talk to us on our team. We have a number of professional advisors like myself. We had our review recently and we added up. We have over 90 years of careers experience between us. It was like, oh my God, you know. Um, this is the free service to you. So it's not just about all of those things like CVs and interview coaching and all those kinds of things. Uh, we are qualified professional career advisors. So if you have no idea what you're doing and where you're going to go and, and really, um, that's our job, you know. So come and talk to us about anything that's, that's worrying you. And we have a new, oh, still going to get me. Um, we have a new series just going out at the moment on Career Hub, um, a series of three 30 minute webinars, so about job search strategies, finding career paths, um, and just the big picture of what's happening in the labour market, market and some career strategies around that because we did a bit of a survey at the beginning of the year and uh, beginning of the semester and um, it kind of came out of a need that we were seeing, some of the, the questions and concerns that students had. Uh, so those are just we brief 30 minute webinars. Um, it's all on Career Hub. And that's Career Hub. Is anybody brave enough to say they've never used Career Hub? Hmm. Right. Um, I'm glad I showed this slide there. <laughs> um, it's good when you can always learn something, isn't it? Okay, Career Hub has a jobs database because it's a screenshot. I can't show you for real. This is where employers who've got graduate roles and, and internships and all the rest of it um, you know, they, they come to the New Zealand unis and say, we want to advertise these roles on Career Hub. Now, if you don't have a look, you don't see them. Uh, you can book appointments with us. You can look at our events. Uh, on Tuesday night, we had, um, I don't know, did any of you see that advertised or tune into that Where Can I Take My Science degree event? A couple of people. One of my co-speakers down the other end. <laughs> I think Garrett practiced on us. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're running events all year, although it is getting to the end of it now. But you know, you, you know those emails that you get from Career Hub? This is what it's about. Um, and then we have a bunch of resources. This year, we have got, I, can't, I don't even know how many. We've done everything since May, just about online, and it's all been recorded. So there are amazing career presentations on all sorts of fields on there as well. And that's it. That's our contact. Go to Career Hub, book, um, book an appointment, come and see us. And I think just to finish off, I'd really say much of what everyone else has said, but I know Garrett said it right in the beginning. And, um, you know, don't stress. 
It'll figure itself out. You'll figure it out, but you won't, you're not making a decision, a forever decision now. You're making the next decision. And if you can try, stay curious, stay true to your why, keep figuring out your what, what your why is. I think we kind of do that all our lives. Um, it'll be all right. Awesome. Thank you for having me.